Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, next generation daily news programming announced for Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. Also, end of an era, Bombardier kills off Learjet and spatial disorientation blamed in S-76B crash. Happy Friday, everybody. You survived the work week. We have a great episode for you ahead of the weekend, so let's go ahead and start with Next Generation Daily News Programming announced for Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo. The Aero News Network and Sun and Fun have teamed up to add something timely, mobile-centric, and vital to the upcoming Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo set for April 13th until the 18th in Lakeland, Florida, on the campus of the Aerospace Center for Excellence. Designed to be the most accessible aviation news event program, the Sun and Fun Digital Daily can be seen on your cell phone, tablet, or any other connected device. We are excited to partner with ANN to bring this new feature to Sun and Fun, said John Lights Leanhow, President, CEO. There is so much information and news to share about our event, as well as our education programming. And using this digital platform will launch us into a fresh era of relevant, just-in-time communication that is really the way the world expects in the 21st century. Aero News is excited to take on the challenge. The Sun and Fun Digital Daily is designed to be the next step in how we, as a community, grow the aviation world and make ready to celebrate all that is extraordinary about the Sun and Fun experience once again. A temporary info site for the coming program can be seen right here on your screen. After the break, Hawaii is now on weather cam. We'll tell you why after these messages. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Introducing the new ELT 345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter or ELT boasts an industry low price, while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing that you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. If you currently live in a place where there is snow, soon, there will be weather camps in Hawaii for all to enjoy the tropical weather. The FAA is expanding weather camera services to Hawaii to enhance aviation safety and pilot decision making. The cameras, which already are installed in Alaska and Colorado, improve safety by providing pilots with near real-time video of weather conditions at their destinations and along their intended flight routes. The Hawaii project will install 23 camera facilities throughout the islands. Listening sessions with Sectrans allows NBAA to advocate for BizAV. Wednesday, NBAA President and CEO Ed Bolin took the opportunity to emphasize the business aviation community's critical role in America's economy, as well as the industry's continued leadership in the safety, security, and sustainability of flight during an aviation listening session between the newly confirmed DOT secretary and industry leaders. First DPS A300 facelift completed. Airbus has handed over the first completed cockpit upgrade for UPS Airlines fleet of 52 A300-600 freighters. The aircraft equipped with Honeywell cockpit avionics was redelivered to UPS on February 3rd at Airbus US facility in Mobile, Alabama, following the certification by EOS on December 22nd of last year. And 
by the FAA on January 5th of this year. This is the first time that such a complex upgrade has been performed on an A300. Luxstream now available on Gulfstream G350, G450, and G550. Western Jet Aviation and Collins Aerospace have completed an STC with the FAA to install the QSAT 2000 SATCOM terminal on Gulfstream and G550 aircraft. Western Jet Aviation now holds STCs to offer QSAT 2000 systems with Luxstream service on G350, G450, and G550 aircraft. Luxstream launched in late 2019, offers speeds up to 25 megabytes per second in the United States and 15 megabytes per second globally via SES, Managed Q-Band Satellite Network. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Learjet has gotten the ax along with over 1,600 staffers. Bombardier announced it will end production of Learjet aircraft later this year, allowing the company to focus on its more profitable Challenger and global aircraft families and accelerate the expansion of its customer services business. With these and other actions, the company aims to generate $400 million annually in recurring savings by 2023. Savings are expected to be approximately $100 million in 2021. The company will take a one-time charge of $50 million this year to support its restructuring actions. Bombardier will continue to fully support the Learjet fleet well into the future. And to this end, they have launched the Learjet Racer Manufacturing Program for Learjet 40 and Learjet 45 aircraft. The Racer Remanufacturing Program will be offered exclusively through Bombardier's service center in Wichita, Kansas. As far as the 2020s overall numbers are concerned, Bombardier Business Aircraft delivered 114 aircraft, including specialized aircraft during the year, comprised of 59 Global, 44 Challenger, and 11 Learjet. Deliveries peak during the fourth quarter with 44 aircraft delivered, including a record 16 Global 7500 delivery. After these messages, NTSB makes determination on what caused the crash that led to the death of a basketball star, his daughter, and others. Details after the break. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. NTSB determined spatial disorientation is to blame in S-76B crash. During a public meeting on Tuesday, NTSB determined a pilot's spatial disorientation and loss of control led to the fatal January 26, 2020 crash of a Sikorsky S-76B helicopter in Calabasas, California. The accident that claimed the lives of all nine persons aboard, including basketball star Kobe Bryant. About two minutes before the crash, while at an altitude of above 450 feet above ground level, the pilot transmitted to an air traffic control facility that he was initiating a climb to get the helicopter above the cloud layers. The helicopter climbed at a rate of about 
1,500 feet per minute and began a gradual left turn. The helicopter reached an altitude of 1,600 feet above the ground level and began to descend rapidly in a left turn to the ground. While the helicopter was descending, the air traffic controller asked the pilot to say intentions, and the pilot replied that the flight was climbing to 4,000 feet mean sea level. A witness saw it emerge from the bottom of the cloud layer in a left bank descent about one or two seconds before impact. The NTSB also determined Island Express Helicopters, Inc. inadequate review and oversight of its safety management process contributed to the crash. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV to search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. Don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with any story ideas or just to say hi. We hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.